to do and do when I do that. Okay. Good evening. It's six o'clock p.m. and I'd like to call the order of the regular meeting. May third, twenty twenty-three. Please join me for the pledge of allegiance. Yeah, we'll call, Alternate committee member Torgerson, present for the record. Committee member Chow. Committee member Chang. Committee member Batnage. Vice Chair McKay. Present. And Chair Lacon. Present. All are present. The agenda is posted 72 hours prior to each of the following locations. City Hall, the Pearl Public Library, and the Stoneman Building. The agenda is also posted on the city's website. The city welcomes public input. At this time, the public may address the Design Review Committee on items that are not on the agenda. Pursuant to state law, the Design Review Committee may not discuss or take action on issues not on the meeting agenda. To assure that everyone, including those joining us remotely, are able to hear all speakers clearly, please speak directly into the microphone. Please note that all comments are limited to three minutes and will be timed by city staff. I would now like to ask staff to explain how the public comment will work for, each, for those individuals participating through Zoom and phone. The public participating through Zoom or phone during, the, during an item's public comment section can use the raise hand feature and wait for their turn to speak or email staff at planning at cityofsanmarino.org uh, with their public comment. Staff will read aloud the public comments received through email, and such comments may be summarized in the interest of time. We have no one online. None. Staff will discuss the case and provide background information and a recommendation. Committee members may ask questions of staff after the presentation. The applicant will then present their project if they desire to do so. Committee may take the opportunity to ask the applicant questions. The hearing will then open to open for public comment from in person and teleconference participants. At the conclusion of public comment, the applicant will have a chance to respond to the public comments, at which time the public comment will be closed. I will then ask for comments from each of the members for discussion, but please do not repeat comments made to your fellow committee members. Committee members may then vote to approve, deny, or continue the project. In the event of a denial, it is hoped that the applicant will have heard comments during the public comment period and during deliberation that will be useful in resubmitting an application. It is also important to understand that there is a 15 day appeal period after an action has been taken for the applicant or any interested party to request the planning commission to review and act. Yeah, we will be presenting item one. Planner Eric G will be presenting item number one. Uh, I think it is requested to remove the existing wood shingle, but present the shape to L, the shadow gray color, or the country gray color. The material, on shadow, the material on the shadow gray color is not identified on the city's pre approved material list. And however, the country gray color is here. The existing property also does not meet the prerequisite of having composition shingle roofing material currently installed on the home and is subject to the review. There were nine out of nine neighbors who supported the approval of the proposed roof replacement, and there's one evil neighbors listing it with the composition roof material to be compatible with the neighborhood. So that neighbor is 586 La Paz Drive that has composition that was approved and permitted. The project meets all findings, and staff recommends approval with the added condition that the residents install gutters in the condition for composition single roofing material listed on the city pre approved roofing materials, colors, and application to supply. Uh, that concludes that report. 
the stuff is going to work with it. And if you have any questions, and the applicant is available to answer any questions as well. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to the podium and speak. Right into the microphone, state your name and your address. Where is Joseph? Here in here. Where is your apartment? Right. Thank you. Where is your apartment? Right. Where is your apartment? Where is your apartment? Right. 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 Where is your apartment? before we move in and it's been 24 years. Um, it generally served the purpose of protecting us under the roof. However, uh, during the recent rain, when we check it in the attic, uh, well, at first we hear noises in the attic <laughs> and we couldn't tell if it's a rat or anything else. Um, but then uh, my husband went into the attic and uh, find holes and then we examine the outside of the roof and find that squirrel has chewed through the roof um, and we suspect those are the footsteps yeah. that we heard from the from the uh, squirrels. Uh, my husband did uh, try to repair it with the wood, uh, the metal shingle, the, the metal piece. Uh, and it didn't last for a day. The uh, squirrel to another hole right next to it. Mm -hmm. So we know it's time to replace the roof. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we did talk to uh, several different roofers that uh, licensed with the, with the San Marino City. And they all told us the, the approved Cedar Light roof is back ordered six months to a year. And we just simply cannot wait because there, there are holes on the roof and every time it rains, we, we worry. So, um, and then we uh, went through all the materials um, that approved by the uh, San Marino city and the roofer also recommend the presidential line of a, a roof. And it, we think the appearance is, is not, doesn't look bad at all. And the material is very strong and it, it does serve the purpose um and there there also the cost is is much less there's thirty thousand dollar less um uh, than the, uh, the, the than see the light and we didn't really have to wait so okay. yeah our house is under a very large sycamore tree and we've had branches fall on the roof um some, something pretty large recently uh we didn't have any damage from that this time but um, it's, it was um, concerning enough that uh, what we were told by the roofers is that cedar light is very fragile, can't walk on it, and if a branch were to fall, it could possibly break it, whereas the um, fiberglass would be uh, able to stand. Okay. Thank you. Is there another question? Yeah. Question. Um, any member chat? Uh, yes, um, could you just confirm that you are also replacing the lots in the whole house? We have, yeah, we have the attached garage, so it's going to be. Oh, it's attached. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? Any more questions? Um, and you mentioned presidential, you, but you're going with a presidential T out, correct? No, we have, uh, yeah, we have clothes for, for both. Just just yeah. prepare for any anything that you guys can approve. <laughs> Find this country and that's the color that's on the record. Just put two color colors out in case somebody didn't like that color for some reason. Is there a color that you're, that you're, um, Reference? Did you have a particular color that you wanted to use that wasn't on the list? Paint colors. Okay. 
And did, did they um, recommend specifically the presidential TL or any other style, or were you just going off the list? Like there was also the landmark TL that's on the list. Of yeah, the landmark uh, is a much thinner uh, roofing, so we would like some, something uh, durable and uh, looks, looks better. So it's durable and it's, uh, we feel that it's probably the closest, we try to get the closest to the current world. Okay. Yeah, and uh, one would did recommend GAF, which is not on the list. So that's. Any other questions? Thank you very much. I'll open it up for public comments. Does anyone have a public comment? Okay. There's no allegation to make public comment at this. Okay. I will close the public comments and move to committee member discussion. Good member Chow. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I think I can support the project now. Uh, as presented, uh, I do want to know just to make sure, even by discussing the report here, uh, we're approving the presidential shape PL. Um, so I just want to make sure that because we're interested in um, the non PL as well. So just want to make sure I can support the presidential shape TL. And uh, in the color of either shadow gray or country gray. Um, I think, given the situation uh, with the uh, um, supply shortage of the cedar light, and um, in addition, um, the proposed material, uh, I think, is compatible with the neighborhood and the, um, the structure itself. Thank you, Thank you very much. Any member Chang? I echo uh, what's being said. I can support the project uh, with what is being uh, spoken. Thank you. Any member values? I can uh, support the project as well. Um, I do want to clarify to the applicant uh, that I don't believe uh, that the um, landmark TL is thinner than. In fact, I think it might be the other way around, at least in, the, in terms of the appearance. But um, nevertheless, this application is for the um, presidential TL. And um, I think we do need to keep emphasizing that that we are not, that we're approving specifically TL. I think to, to a roofer, sometimes might be like, oh, yeah, well, presidential shape, presidential TL, whatever. But I think um, we need to be um, absolutely certain any time that we're um, doing either presidential TL or landmark TL, that the applicant and the roofer are both, um, and the uh, city inspectors are um, are sure that this is the correct material. <laughs> so um, I think that either one of these ones would be okay, um, except I would personally leave this up to the applicant in this um, case. Um, that's it. Applicants raise their hand. Am I allowed to open up a public comment? You would have to. Uh, oh, okay. Well, if you have public comments, would you like to come? Keep it as short as possible. Sorry, I just want to clarify when I say we got both quotes, it says presidential TL and presidential TL Solaris. So, either one is okay. <laughs> the application is for yeah, the Solaris is a different product, a product, a product line under a presidential TL. So the, the Solaris, yeah, the we Solaris. don't have that on. Yeah, we're approving presidential TL. We yeah. aren't looking at the Solaris line. Solaris, so the presidential TL has your option of additional Solaris or not. Sorry, yeah, the Solaris line is actually it, it's all under TL, but Solaris um, is thicker, and it, uh, it's it's the same. Oh. What it is is it's an additional feature. I'm sorry, sorry, in the microphone, please. It's, it's an additional feature to um, resist the, the heat from the sun. It will keep the house cooler, reduce, you know, improve energy. Um, 
I think we were um, thinking that you were looking at President Sheikh versus Presidential Sheikh TL. So, um, um, so the yeah, application yeah. was for President TL and Mr. Harris. What was? I'm sorry. It was. So the application yeah. is actually for Solaris? Not, yeah. not the Solaris. Not the, not the this presidential is, deal. This, this is the first we're hearing of the Solaris. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were telling me that I misread it. No. I, I think this is the first staff is hearing of it. Is that yes. right? Uh, so I think we need to go back to the discussion. Or we don't consider the Solaris color because that's not on the agenda this evening. Uh, I would recommend the post board hearing. Question item for you, specific to what uh, Assistant Prime Minister just mentioned. If you want to consider Solaris, that would be up to you. But the analysis made by staff was for the Thank you very much. Uh, I will close public comment now in the back. Discussion? Um, I looked at both the Solaris. Um, and compared them to the regular team. Mm -hmm. And I have found them to be just a little bit lighter and brighter, but it's really hard to, to catch with your eye. Honestly, it's hard to even tell the difference, but okay. I don't know. That's just my opinion. So you're okay with either? I personally would be okay with it, but you know, um, We'll go and yeah, see where that one else says. And it's just your, um, the presidential, the Solaris color is available uh, in both these same colors in the palette. I don't have it. I don't have it. I, I closed my accidentally, so I can't find it. Okay. From what I recall, and I could be mistaken, but we had a similar Solaris application recently. From what I recall, there was no shadow gray version of the Solaris. There was charcoal gray, and it's slightly darker from what I remember. Oh, I'm sorry, it might be charcoal black, not charcoal gray. So we don't have the colors. I suggest we stick with the agenda item we have before us. Would you like to add to the comments about the Solaris versus? The project we have in front of us? Um, I think, um, well, certainly, like I said, I'm very comfortable uh, supporting the project uh, if it does as presented, uh, that is where it will come to this presidential shape TL. Um, but the Solaris lines, because of the, uh, the color choices, is different. Um, without seeing it, uh, I don't feel comfortable supporting that. Either that it might just be okay. Because uh, we, we did approve something uh, before the Solaris is a little shinier. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm more comfortable uh, just supporting what's before us. Okay, thank you. I feel the same way. I, I, I think the, uh, the um, Solaris line, we, even though we approved the last one, it was almost like a over black uh, color. Very limited choice. And uh, I remember that one, yeah, on the last blog post. Um, I, I think we should just, I, I personally feel that was pretty good. What staff has recommended from our floor all the time. Thank you. Can you remember that, Nisha? Uh, yes, we have this one. Actually, go ahead. Not to confuse anything, this actually makes it a little less confusing. Both shadow gray and country gray. Are available in presidential TL Solaris in the 91108. So there are identical options for each one. I understand that we may not want to consider it anyway because it's actually not on the agenda, which brings up uh, Brown Act issues and I don't know what else. But well, that is something that you just pulled up on. So if I may, uh, with that information, I mean, the same country or uh, if the other committee members also feel comfortable, I can support either the presidential TL or the presidential uh, Solaris, the TL Solaris, but 
Do you have a comment? I, I was just going to um, mention that if the committee consider, can consider the SOLARS, uh, would it be an issue since uh, in terms of the deviation of the projects? Um, and the, the notice of this project was for a reroute. Obviously, there was a specific uh, uh, a specific model, but um, the wouldn't be deviating from the actual request, which is to be the home. So uh, there wouldn't be an issue if the committee wanted to or could consider uh, amending the uh, uh, product. Oh, okay, great, thank you. Vice um, Chair McKay. Thank you. Um, you know, the, the applicant, your home is on a beautiful street, such beautifully maintained homes. I haven't had the opportunity before to uh, drive down that street. Um, I uh, am never a big fan of going from natural wood to comp shingle, as the my fellow committee members know, but I can make the findings tonight that um, the um, application um, is compatible with the neighborhood and that it would also be compatible with the structure itself and that the colors are consistent I could approve it as set forth in the application. I could also approve it with the um, certainty presidential TL Solaris with specifically either shadow gray or uh, country gray. I note that the um, home the project is the most prominent roof on the block. I just wanna make that comment for the, for the record, but the other property in the legal neighborhood that has comp shingle is also a relatively high pitched roof. So. And there's a lot of comp shingle on this block. So I could support it uh, either way if my fellow committee members agree. Thank you. Uh, I agree with my committee members. Um, I could support the project as presented tonight uh, in the two colors presented as well as the Solaris TL version. So that. Uh, just to prepare the committee uh, for the motion, if you can be kind enough to that the project is not too far. Um, so if you look at the step before, we kind of lay it out for you. But it would be great if the motion um, mentioned that the project is not too far, uh, that it meets all the required means, and then it would put it in project particular. In this case, it would be a specific uh, roofing material with the specific uh, colors. If that's what the uh, committee's motion will be. Just going forward with all of that. Yes. With that being said, would somebody like to make a motion? Committee member Chow? Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I'll give it a try. Um, I move to approve your. 23-27 at 567 Lapaz Drive um, with the finding that um, the project meets the finding and also the project uh, is exempt from CPA. Um, the uh, I move to approve the following material choices. Uh, to install certainty presidential shape TL uh, in shadow gray or country gray. Second choice is to um, install certainty presidential shape TL Solaris um, in shadow gray or country gray. I'll second. Roll call. Uh, just for clarification. Uh, is this also with the conditions listed in the pre approved list? Correct. As stated in the, the standard conditions for roofing material? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Uh, moving on to roll call. Um, committee member Chow? Uh, committee member Chang? Committee member Batnage? Yes. Vice Chair McKay? Yes. Chair Lacon? Yes. The motion passes 5 0. So just to be clear, you have the option of okay. 
And we'll move on to item number two, who will be presenting that tonight. Chair, that'll be me, Assistant Planner Sabaxis Union, for the record. <clears throat> Uh, the applicant proposes the replacement of nearly all windows and doors at the residence located at 620 South Allen Avenue. Oh, I'm sorry. And this is for design review case number DR2303 um, located at 620 South Allen Avenue. Uh, the applicant proposes the replacement of nearly all windows and doors at the residence. Um, the project is subject to the DRC uh, approval since the city's window replacement procedures uh, require special types of windows, such as leaded or stained glass windows, uh, certain fixed windows, or any other special windows as uh, determined by staff um, uh, to remain. The existing windows can be classified in three general categories, wood windows, aluminum windows, and special windows. <clears throat> Most of the existing windows on the residence are wood windows. They are proposed to be replaced with pre-approved Lincoln aluminum clad windows with seven eighths inch grills uh, and with a bronze uh, factory finish, which is in accordance with the window replacement procedures. A number of aluminum windows exist as well. Currently, these windows are inconsistent with the architectural style of the residence. The change from aluminum windows to the proposed Lincoln windows will result in greater architectural consistency and is in accordance with the window replacement procedures. Finally, there are a number of leaded or stained glass windows, all of which will remain intact with one in, uh, exception. There's one stained glass window and door side by side on the first floor of the south elevation. Um, that are proposed to be removed and replaced with Lincoln uh, aluminum clad uh, wood. The applicant has cited the need for tempered glass in this location. <clears throat> and the other two stained glass windows on the south elevation will remain intact. Uh, the other um, special windows were the arched windows in the rear. Um, uh, moving on. Uh, the city's consultants architectural resources group identified this residence as a potential historic resource to a potential historic district. The residence does not have a historic designation at this time. Their analysis also concluded that uh, some of the windows have already been replaced, although it doesn't note which ones. Finally, staff recommends approval of the project. The committee shall uh, render a decision on the project based on the applicable design review findings as identified in the staff report. Staff is recommending um, including the following conditions in the approval. Uh, the existing decorative screens in the front of each door uh, shall remain or be replaced in kind to match the same design and material. And the original stained glass and leaded windows be protected in place as indicated on the plans, allowing all other window changes as proposed. Uh, staff can answer any of the committee's questions and the applicants are here as well. Um, Step pointed out on the east side of the national house, uh, the window number two, the two slide information at the uh, I think that should be window 33, not number three. So number three is at the front side, it's on the front side. In the back, it should be 33 and 30. Uh, it is correct. Uh, it is a mistake. It should be number 33 and 32. So the staff Thank you. Thank you. I have one question, and that is on the same page 52 of 156. Windows 15 through 17 on this staff report that was to be replaced by T. 
whereas on the plants, it's J. Uh, to clarify, do you mean the same windows number 33 and 32, or did you call out a different? 15 to 17. 15. They are on the uh, first floor. Thank you. Uh, to clarify, one of the windows will be replaced with window T, and the other will be replaced with window J. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Um, do we know of any other homes along the neighborhood? Original wood windows in the legal neighborhood have been changed to a lower window. Thank you, Mr. I don't have that information at this time to answer your question. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? Committee member Chow. But just a quick note, I also noticed some mistakes on um, eight, sheet A1 eight of the plan, but maybe that one could uh, ask. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Sure, if this is a staff question or to the uh, applicant, but I just want to confirm that window A is a casement that opens that's off the living room. The neighbor across the street has identified it as fixed. It's a casement, but it's sorry, 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 you know dialogue. All right, so it's the staff I'm addressing. Um, uh, I'll echo what the applicant was saying from the uh, crowd. Uh, it is a casement window that should be able to open, but it's painted that it can't open right now. A casement. So it would be like for like. Thank you. Is that the project? Good evening. I'm Stephen Dahl with Dahl Architects, 1134 El Centro Street in South Pasadena is our offices. Uh, we're architects for the homeowners, uh, Jackie Chan, her husband, their five little kids. Uh, with me tonight is my sister, Tammy Callen, our project manager. So after I'm done with some brief remarks, She'll come up with some drawing clarification. She did all the wonderful AutoCAD drawings for us on this project. Um, we love working with families. Uh, that's why we're all here in San Marino for the kids um, and, and working on the old homes to help support these families. Uh, we do this also in other nearby cities. Um, they even have a separate committees set up. And I know it's a lot of work and, and staff uh, just for historic properties. So in Pasadena and South Pasadena, whole separate committee structures just for historic structures. But for decades here in San Marino and in these other cities, if uh, the proposed, should I, should I wait? I think. Is it okay to proceed? I, I wanted to make sure the chair heard my remarks. So we're doing this for the families. We work on a lot of old homes. I was bringing up that uh, in other cities they have historic committees that just work on historic structures. We don't have that yet here in San Marino. Uh, but for decades here, even in San Marino, if uh, the proposal is not visible from the street, is uh, one story level and uh, not projecting more than 10 feet out, it would be reviewed to sit a staff level. In fact, on this project, uh, everything was approved by staff. And uh, over a year ago, we were in plan check. 
uh, there's a staff turnover. The new staff wasn't as comfortable as the old staff. And I don't know if this is a written policy or just kind of the rule of thumb, how things were done. So we're here tonight, but whether uh, a structure is, is uh, historic or not, uh, we're going to consider this is a old home that's potentially a contributor to a potential historic district. But we're gonna follow the Secretary of the Interior guidelines for historic structures, even at, if it could have been a historic. Um, it's, it's beautiful and we are not adding one square foot uh, to this home. Uh, we're just asking to change out some exterior doors and windows. And the reason for this is the five young children and getting a real working kitchen and a better connection with the backyard. And so that facilitates some of these needs. But to help you out uh, in your decisions here, we're not changing anything that hasn't already been changed. Uh, staff was very helpful and had us go through the permit um, uh, records for this home. And in 1977, uh, the pop out in the rear uh, was a, a covered porch and that was infilled in 1977 uh, with that Gothic arch. Next to it, uh, where the kitchen is and is going to be is another Gothic arch was added at that time. A very clever, maybe at the time, they weren't following the Secretary of the Interior guidelines. There's an arch in the front of the home they were mimicking and it fools the public, it fools staff, maybe it fools you that maybe these arches were original, they're, they're not. And if you went by the site and we invited you to, to staff to, to go back there and look, you can see uh, cracks in the stucco. That these are obvious changes and, and infills. So to give you peace of mind, uh, we're not changing things back there, altering that is original to this almost 100 year old beautiful home. I also understand staff's concern about specialty windows and stained glass. Um, we work a lot with Judson Studios, the world famous um, stained glass group here locally, um, internationally with homes. And um, we know that the stained glass windows in the back of this home are not original to the home. They seem to date also from 1977. But if there is any concern, there are some wonderful stained glass windows. We included photos of those in your package. They're actually on inside walls. They used to be outside walls before that porch was filled in. But the outside windows in the back are, are not original. <clears throat> but if there are any concerns, there are, uh, there's only one window in what's going to be the laundry room. And if, if it's really critical, because we make all the findings to make all the decisions to approve what we're proposing, but if that one window is still a concern, I'm thinking we could apply a fixed uh, safety glass inside that stained glass window to remain on the outside. And so then that one non-historic stained glass window would not have to be removed. And with that, if there's any other questions, uh, please let us know. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions for the applicant? Um, Vice Chair McKay. Thank you. So the question that I had on staff that they were not able to answer, I'm hoping that you can answer. Um, are there properties in the legal neighborhood where um, wood windows have been replaced with um, casement aluminum? I understand that um, uh, in the back, there's the unfortunate um, sliding aluminum that I understand that, but but I'm talking about going from the wood to the aluminum because we have to make a finding of consistency with the property itself and consistency with the legal neighborhood. And I did notice that there are um, a lot of similar window treatments in the neighboring homes. That's a good question. We have not surveyed the neighborhood and I don't know, staff obviously hasn't and uh, that would be probably a consultant that would have to do a, a whole survey. We don't know the answer. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Vice Chair, I mean, in writing, yes, thank you. Yes, I when I was looking at the windows of this house, I was noticing that um, many of the windows have a really delicate, well, maybe not delicate, but thin, um, they're not seven. I, there was a decision, I think, to that most of these. Um, 
can't think of the word for it, but the um, muttons. The muttons, uh, yes, are seven eighths of an inch, yeah. which is quite large and a big difference from what's there now, which is I'm pretty sure three eighths of an inch. Um, but they're in any case, they're 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 not close to seven eighths or, or close to one inch, which is a big departure. So I was just wondering what was the decision making process that went into that. The windows available uh, with tempered and and uh, energy dual glaze efficiency. It, it's just uh, it's tough in, in that teeny of a mutton these days. Uh, are you saying that that there isn't anything available that would be a smaller mutton? No, I did not say that. Um, I need clarification on window number 25, um, which is on, this, on the south side. Uh, it's marked as G on the plan, and that is um, casement. That's an original window that's staying. Excuse me. And it does open. Already. I don't know. We believe that window G, she's talking about uh, number 25 on the south, is an original window to the home. It's a beautiful stained glass window and it is existing to remain. I do not know if it's operable. So, what does it mean on the plan when it? identifies it as G, which would be a casement window. A G is just um, the number given to the window. I don't know where it says that it's a casement. I, I think it's just identifying the window. T. Well, all the windows that are new are labeled alphabetically. In that case, it should not be labeled G. It's just number 25. And uh, the door, which is on the same side, you're proposed, proposing to remove it entirely. And it has, it has some leaded glass, I believe. It does. The side door right. on the south right. has had stained glass in it, leaded glass in the, right. in the window in the top half. Is, is there a way to preserve that? Okay. I heard staff mention that earlier that both the door and the window. We didn't we didn't think so, but again, like the window adjacent to it in this laundry room, we could put a fixed tempered safety glass on the inside and then keep the stained glass on the outside. And so then Either of those that are not original stained glass windows could then remain if, if it's really a concern to you. But those are 1977 euro windows. They're, they're not original. They're not uh, 98 year old windows to the home. But if there is a, a, a concern overriding that, uh, they could be preserved in that way with the safety glass on the inside. Thank you. Um, Matt, Matt. Many members to help. So questions, right? You can, um, Mr. Dahl, you can still stay or answer whoever's answering at the podium. So you can speak into the microphone. Yeah, to answer my question, you probably want to put up your, your plans uh, because that will be referred to Chief 81. Chief 81, 81, upper right corner, um, your descriptions regarding windows on each. Television and each television. So uh, I think there might be three mistakes if you could verify. Um, the first one, I'll start from the, the first elevation uh, described on the west. It says, it says on the front of the house, window one, two on the first floor, and 26 on the second floor. Did you see that? Okay. I think. 
on the second floor, window number 26, it should be window number 22. If you check your plan, number six is the last. Number six is, is going to be replaced, but not remain. So it should be number six, number, it should be number 28. Because you are 28 is remaining, 26 is getting replaced. I'm sorry, does it say which elevation? Because I'm, I'm looking on the It ground. says on the front of the house, so I'm looking at the west elevation. Okay. So if you go to the west elevation, okay. Uh, go to number 26. That is the window. balcony window. That balcony right. doors. That window, if you look at your note on the on the on the plan, but that that window's number 26 is going to be correct. It is to be replaced. So but your description says here will be retained. Incorrect. The one it will be retained is number 28, not number 26. So it is incorrect on sheet A1, but it is correct on that's the right. Floor plan. Because sheet A1 is part it's of the plan. So, I'm sorry. So it's, well, it's not confusing. Wrong. Incorrect. So please make a note. Uh, let's make sure we get that. Um, then the next window that's incorrect. Incorrectly listed, which is next paragraph, the next elevation says on the north, which is fragment, you see that section? Okay. Go down to the second line, it says windows 27, 30, 31, 34 will be replaced kind for kind. See that? I see it. Okay. Number 27, the first one is not correct. It should be number 29. 29. Again, if you go to your north elevation, just look for 27, you will see that it's incorrect. Take your time because you can maybe. Correct, it should be number 29. Uh, 28. Uh, 29, you're 29. correct. 29. So, number 27 is incorrect, it should be number 29. So, um, so it also has staff to make sure note. Um, the last one is the third. The next paragraph on the back of the house. On the back of the house, which is so, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Line seven says window number 22 in the kitchen is being removed. You see that window 22 east elevation. I see that. Um, that window, that window is not number 22. It's number 42. Number 42 is getting filled in by a few stuff, not number 22. Number 22 is in the kitchen, and number 42 is on the second floor right above it. So number, number 42 is being removed, and number 22 is being replaced. All right. So number 42 is being removed, right? Correct. So here it says number 22 is being removed. Is that correct? That is incorrect. Okay, so please change that to 42. Okay. Um, those are the three items. It's fine. Thank you. Vice Chairman Hay. I have a question about the letter 
that has been submitted by your neighbor, Brett Cannon, who does not approve of the project apparently, or objects rather, objects. Have you had any chance to address those issues with Mr. Cannon? He mentions that um, plans are silent as to maintaining the size of the mullions and blazing. Plans are silent in terms of preserving the window jams. Um, he's concerned that wood windows and wood doors aren't being used. It's not original material, et cetera. And I know that you discussed what was and wasn't original and that that's that there's you know that that might be misleading um, because of the matching of the arched windows in the back. But the main question is, have you addressed any of this with Mr. Cannon? Uh, we exchanged two or three emails um, and he was at the very beginning um, after my first notification, he wanted to see the entire set of plans. In the first mailing, I only sent out the page one and the elevations because it was just about the windows and he wanted to see the entire house. So I personally sent him all of the rest of the sheets and then henceforth in the other four mailings, I sent all of the drawings to everyone. So I did not address him directly on his specific needs or wants for this house because that's what you guys are for. I'm not designing the house for him his concerns. The, the family wanted to move into a house and upgrade the windows for safety, for energy, um, and they wanted a more uniform look. We didn't want to just replace one because we, we wanted to make it look uniform and nice. And you no, know, as, as to Brett's comments, I tried to address him in emails and I directed him to the city to, to follow up with his comments. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Committee Member Chen? Yeah, one is the floor raise, what's the construction detailing? Um, we do have some new windows installed <clears throat> away from the original. Um, how do you want to address the um, jam and the head and the fill? I do some of the, the window assisting are um, very intricate when it comes to the, the thickness of the wall, how the blue nose are made, uh, very nicely done. Uh, when you move the, the windows to the location, there is nothing on the plan showing that how you're going to handle it. Uh, you have an idea how you want to address that? Right. I'm, I'm hoping it's in our notes someplace, and, and it's a very good point that it's critical that um, uh, any window that gets moved uh, matches everything else that's there. And so if, if you uh, would be so moved, and, and I would encourage you, because we've got to do this right, if, if that isn't in the submittal or in the staff conditions, we need to match that, and, and we need to bullnose and roll that to the thickness of the wall and feel that whether it's a new opening or an existing opening or relocated window, it's critical. It's all got to match. And that was the intent uh, that we have a full scale model out there of existing windows that are remaining those openings that any other opening has to exactly match that. We, we can't have any deviation. And, and since it's so specialized, we, we didn't show a, a separate detail of that because they have the full scale model, model to match. But, you're right, it's, it's very important. So, so these would, would be part of the record, okay? All new window or modified window, uh, all jam head and fill details would be matched to the Correct. Okay, yes. I just wanted to put it there. Thank you very much for bringing that up. Committee member Chow. Committee member Benny. <laughs> okay. Um, I was uh, going to ask this about. Um, um, I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought for a second. Go ahead, Committee Member Chow. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, it came back to me. So, <laughs> um, so the kind of further to your 
question or, or, or similar to your question. I'm, I'm wondering if it's even possible using aluminum clad windows to, to mimic these, um, you know, the, the, the installation, you know, with the, with the jams and the bull nosing and all that with some of these, it, it doesn't seem, it seems very difficult. And I was wondering if you can explain uh, how you would um, confront those challenges. And if, if there's gonna be, if there's gonna be the know-how of how to, of, of how to do that, because um, the, as you've seen on the house, there's these very special, um, very thick walls. And I, I'm not even sure that the installation of the um, of aluminum clad windows even really can, can be installed in the same way. It, it's a good question. And we've done this. Um, more and more of our clients are, are just um, uh, they're, they're trying to raise their kids, and, and that's their focus. And, and the maintenance, uh, extra maintenance of, of wood is just so tough. The, the clad windows have really solved that, and, and they're, they're a lot better than they used to be. And you get out uh, 10 feet away, and if it's a painted wood window or clad, you just can't tell. And the devil's in the detail, as you say. So it's important. We've done this with many homes uh, locally. I don't have any specific addresses with me, but it's the detail that we've drawn and gone over with our contractors, it is a little bit tricky. And you, you have to set the window in uh, first in a larger opening and then uh, roll the stucco into it. Uh, waterproofing is critical. And so um, the, the window is put into a larger opening so that the waterproofing with the standard aluminum frame modern type window has the um, extensions of the waterproofing go out on all sides and then the, the wall is shrunk around it to cover that up. And so it, it is kind of a two-step process. It's not just a pop-in, you're right, because if it goes in and just that hole, that opening, you can't have the extension of the waterproofing. So the hole has to be bigger. And so it, it's a coordination between the window person and the stucco person waterproofing, really three different people involved. So it takes a really good general contractor. We've worked on the home directly across the street um, uh, that would be just wet on Allen. Um, and the contractor on that was wonderful. I don't know if you know Marty Perry from Premier Construction, but uh, that is uh, a Wallace that home there across the street. And we did all that work there and, and the proper detailing and the bulldozing and, and rolling it in. So it's critical that, that we work closely to have that done. And so I'm so glad that the commissioner brought that up and it's got to be done right. And it's it's done wider and then brought in. You can't just pop it into that opening. So it's it's some stucco work that's going to be involved. I see clarifying. So you're saying for those very recessed windows that are like a foot of stucco, you're going to be removing the stucco to make it wider in order to insert these new windows. You really have and to, you, you know have the quality. I know you're the architect, so you will not be participating in the construction of no, the we're out there all the time. You yeah. are. Oh yeah, we, we, we go all the way through until the homeowner uh, takes over the home. Okay, and so you have experience in replacing a hundred year old stucco in yeah. the same manner, the same material, you can duplicate it to look as if it hadn't been done? Well, you go out there now and it's been done badly in 1977. You can I'm talking about the front. I'm just curious about all of the original windows that we're going to see from the street. Yeah. yeah. So I'm you're confident. you're confident and you've yes. been doing this. Yes. And do you, do you recommend that original window? Because of course you can reach, remove your windows and put um, your aluminum clad in. But is this something that you've recommended to your client as opposed to um, restoring them, which would be a lot less expensive? Well, not necessarily over the next 20 years. I, I'd say it's the opposite. Well, my understanding is that the windows only last for 20 years, the new aluminum clad. That's my understanding that the color is, 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 is good for about 20 years. There's, there's no repainted windows on the home. Uh, those are not 98 year old windows. So, okay. Oh, so none of them are original? 
I mean, I, I, I haven't investigated every single one, but the ones we've looked over, a lot's been replaced. And I, back before design a review committee, uh, you could replace your windows in and do that work and, and not get permits. And, and a lot of those look like they've been replaced and have redone. Okay. I know. Can I specifically about some of the plans? I had a, I had a question about um, plans and I want to get my page about so I can ask you. Okay, on page A2, on the bottom left on the demo plan for the existing front floors. What? I don't know what you're going to say. Okay, the south facing window, it says existing window to be replaced it's and existing remaining. window to be removed. And then on A2 on the bottom right, the new first floor plan says both uh, existing windows to remain. Those are those are both incorrect. I'm sorry. They're both incorrect. The, well, the one on the demolition plan, the existing window to replace is incorrect. That, that existing window is to remain. This is just wrong. Okay. So that the A2 the bottom is wrong, and then the A2 on the um, the new first floor plan is well, that. I'm pointing to um, the H window that says existing window to be replaced. And then the G window, existing window to remain. So those are correct. I'm just, I just see inconsistencies from the demo plan to the first floor, the new plan. As far as I can tell, the only mistake is the one at the bathroom number one, where it says existing window to be replaced. That is incorrect. Okay. And the other side is existing window, window to remain. Right, and it is. Okay, so those two have to match. We just have to have them consistent on Correct, okay. yes. I mean, okay, and then on page A5. Um, I'm looking at the tab, I just wrote it down. So okay. I'm going to get it fast. On A5, the bottom left on the, the new east elevation and the new south, um, the French doors, it says curls to be one and one eighth inch thick number six, number eight, and number eight? You know, actually, this was Savog that suggested we change this to match the existing door, the look of the existing door. So I said, that's fine with us, and that's fine with the client. Okay, but I'm just on comparing it to page A4, where it says all windows and doors in the house and garage are new. We can manufacture painted bronze with seven, eight inch simulated divided lights. Is that the same dimension we're thinking, talking about? Well, this would be an exception to that okay, because so it does state that they would be one and one eight at okay. this door. But I, I, it should it should be consistent. Sorry, it should be consistent. It should be called out on that. I mean, this one part is saying that they're all seven eight, and then I'm here, but saying it's one and one eight. I, just I, I should say it, unless noted eight. otherwise. And this is noted. Otherwise. And then on page A5 in the middle page on the left side, it says the doors to be replaced, um, I thought were not accurately represented in the drawings. The, the, back, the back door is on an angle or a rounded angle, the one single door and then the other door is shown as a solid door when it has windows in it. The single door near the chimney mm -hmm. is on an angle so mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to show but I wanted you to be able to see it. It'll still be on an angle? Oh yeah it, it the, the wall is not changing. Uh, and then on the page A4 on the left side, the window schedule, it says M is replacing those uh, center windows and the big, big, big shaped window, those characters, tiny featured windows, the center, those are casement open windows, they open and close. And on the, on the schedule, they're replacing it with fixed windows. So yes. I think that we have to have that um, specified. 
because that's not like for like the original window. It does open, and there's a screen over the window. I know it does in the front. I'm not sure about the family room. I, I think the family room is fixed, but I would have to double check that before I change that. But it is not like for like. So the question is, you have to represent it the first time, the original. So we, it is a, a casement that does open. It is the front window. The but you're replacing but the front fixed. window. The front window is not down. That's what you're talking about. And D. D is D. It is like I know that one is a casement, so that one is in. You are replacing a casement, not a fixed window. Yes. Okay. I just, you know, I noticed all these inconsistencies now that I'm seeing others. It gets them all cleared up. Any other questions? Vice Chair McKay? Thank you. Um, you mentioned that you actually did some work on the house across the street, which is a Wallace map, um, but that did not include because I have asked you if you did any work in the legal neighborhood where, or if you knew of any houses in the legal neighborhood where wood windows had been changed over to a living room flat. So you weren't doing anything like that in the house across the street, correct? I think the question that I brought up uh, referencing that home was a good local contractor who knows how to work with these older homes. But so it wasn't so window work though, like this. Replace all of the windows. I believe they replaced a few and I, I, I from my recollection, I think it was about five years ago, I believe those were all metal, not wood windows. So steel. Steel. Thank you. For clarification, um, when you say aluminum clad, are you referring to the outside only? And the inside is wood, and the and the uh, whole window is wood. That the outside is wrapped in aluminum. Is that correct? The answer is yes, and it's wonderful for the homeowners because on the inside they can stain the, the wood and have that wood look. And it's a, it's a real wood window. It just is covered instead of with paint with aluminum on the outside only. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah, there is uh, some way to give public comment oh. online. Oh, I'll go to that next. Uh, anyone here for public comments? So we know it here. Uh, anyone online? Yes, uh, Jennifer G, you may speak now. Uh, just a friendly reminder, please state your name and address and you will be timed. We'll let you know when your time is up. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jennifer Giles. I'm an architect. I live at 2290 Lorraine Road. And um, I had a very difficult time reviewing these drawings. And if it was difficult for myself as a fellow architect, I can really feel for you as a committee also having a very difficult time. Um, I think it's imperative that the architect bring a complete and correct set of drawings to the meeting. It's a waste of everyone's time to be nitpicking over little things here and there. It was very hard to follow. Um, another um, comment I have is that there was no spec sheet provided with the public information about the Lincoln windows so that we could review how the installation is done and the type of materials that are there. Um, I also agree with the neighbor across the street, Mr. Cannon, with regards to the stucco. And it's very difficult to take and have a material that resembles 100 year old stucco and I agree with the committee's questions and concerns about the recessed windows and how those are to be replaced with newer product and then the stucco um, replaced to bring it back to its original look. Um, I um, I agree with the architect's comment about um, the windows on the rear of the house are not viewed from the street. However, I disagree in the sense that those should be just cast aside. They should be considered by you, definitely, because um, I very much feel that the rear portion of the house is very busy and it's, and it's, and it's not very compatible with itself. Um, 
I think um, committee member McKay had a very valid question as to whether or not other historic homes in the area that have wood windows have been replaced with aluminum clad. And I think that that is an important observation to get correct and then make a decision upon. Lastly, um, I agree that the homeowner has the opportunity to make changes to the inside of their home. I agree with that statement. However, the homeowner is the steward of a hundred year old home here and um, they should understand that they are to care and maintain that home. And I feel that wood replacement windows for wood windows is more um, in like with the home rather than a aluminum clad exterior. You are not going to get the same look. However, I did not have a link in spec sheet to look at to make a better decision. Thank you very much. Anyone else on the line? Okay. Uh, I will close the public comment portion and move to committee member discussion. Committee member, Spanish? This is a very uh, tricky uh, agenda item. It was very hard for me to. Um, to come to any sort of um, really clear and concise, you know, blanket um, opinion about things. Um, but I think that at the very least, I believe that it would be imperative to at the very least maintain the facade in wood windows. I, I, I know how, look how we're talking, we're asking our, ourselves, we're asking each other, does this exist in the legal neighborhood? If we allow aluminum clad windows in the facade of this house, it becomes the domino for all the other houses. This is the gateway to the Huntington Library. It's a really obviously beautiful, charming, incredible architectural um, home. And it has very distinct and charming features that I, the more that we, more we ask questions, the more it seems like it would be very hard to main, to really maintain those features. Um, if we, uh, if, if aluminum cloud windows were to be installed. And, you know, we have seen this before on much less handsome homes. We've seen bay windows and we're always, you know, very much assured that it's going to be a beautiful install of this bay window. And I, mean, I realize that there are no bay windows in this house. I'm just using an, an, an example that, um, you know, and then afterwards we see something that really looks very um, generic and machine made and it, it, it has lost its charm. And I believe that at the, the, the very least the facade uh, we should, as a group, uh, maintain the wood windows in the front. And I have, having changed wood windows, I have made them double glazed. They are, they can be extremely energy efficient. Um, and there's no, there's no real loss of um, energy efficiency if, if you get quality windows. They will cost more. Uh, I think this is, you know, I don't, I'm just throwing it. This, this is probably a four or five million dollar house. I think, you know, the windows are going to cost something. Um, I, I don't think in this case that the cost is, um, is, is something that is the most important issue. Um, so I also just, you know, have trouble with the idea of of approving, you know, wood windows side by side with uh, windows and to, to be a non-uniform look. Um, also, as I think has been touched on, you know, we're looking at aluminum cloud windows 20 years later and they're faded and they look chalky and they get, you know, mineral deposits on them. And I think they have many of the same 
issues that wood windows do in terms of maintenance, except that you can't spiff up a aluminum clad window. You're sort of stuck with it unless you're going to change the whole thing. So I think the aluminum clad windows have introduced their own uh, problems and certainly introduced a multitude of problems into a a uh, historical home that has some very distinct um, features such as this one. Um, I also have a big problem with the plans being so it's in inconsistent uh, throughout. It's become a little frustrating as we've had this, um, these discussions to have so many um, uh, things that are not clear. So um, that, that's where I stand. Thank you. Me and Edward Chow. Thank you, sir. Um, I think I will just kind of get right down to it and then I'll backtrack. Um, I think it'll be a stretch for me to support this project tonight. Um, I have many concerns. The, the for example, um, no, I don't find many of the proposed life for life conditions are really like that. Um, in fact, there is no visual reference even to the Lincoln uh, windows that is supposedly like the light. Um, I just don't see that. Um, the, uh, you know, if you look at the, the, the beautiful, beautiful uh, architect, architectural details um, in this house, um, the windows are a huge part of it, um, along with the, the wood timbering, uh, kind of in, in a corbel jetty uh, kind of look. The windows, the volumes, the big, big volumes, it's a huge part of it. You have this vertically thick volumes that, that's somehow woven into these thin, um, um, much thinner horizontal uh, uh, lights. So uh, it's just all part of the, uh, the characteristics. And, and my concern is that this will all be um, taken away. It's not really clear. Um, I also uh, have concerns, great concerns, um, Regards to the um, the stucco uh, being uh, that is you walk up to the house, but the, the first thing I notice is the stucco. I, I, I just uh, wow, this is really good. Um, I am very nervous, uh, and uh, we heard a lot of verbal descriptions that yes, you can do this, um, but as presented in the plan, I'm not seeing that in, in my approach. Uh, I'll try to make it short. Uh, so a couple other things um, also you see are very important to me is, again, I think the windows are a huge part of the architectural characteristics of this home, uh, including the two arched windows in the back. Um, if you look at the back current, current um, condition, uh, that is a good example how not to do it. Uh, look at the second, or that is how not to do it. So to continue down this path to lose those two big arch windows, replace with a whole bunch of more squares, rectangles, that's just going to ruin this house. Um, so um, I think that being said, I don't find um, the, the proposed project meeting the desired review findings. Number one, uh, I, I think it changed, it does change the architectural style, visual bulk. Um, and the uh, finding number four, um, I do not think it's consistent in terms of it matches the existing building or structure. Any member change? Yeah, I kind of echo what I said earlier about how I'm going to detail all these uh, proposed windows. First of all, uh, again, Lincoln Luminance had 
there's no detail whatsoever. I, I'm not familiar with that window, so I don't know how the window is still or the the cam looks like. Um, seeing what's out there, especially the the front elevation of the building, not only that, it it it, it curves in a very um, artistic way, but the window still is is actually it's wood, uh, merging a the aluminum clad window in wood still and make sure it works. It's a real challenge. Without knowing even what the proposed window details like. Um, I believe the not only that it curves in the one direction, it actually tapers. Uh, it gets bigger in the bottom and it flares up into a smaller dimension on top. So it's trying to fit a um, standard product into a very custom made wall section would be more than a challenge. So I think what's going to happen is that we, we, we definitely, for me, we, we definitely need to keep this front elevation um, untouched. We can't, we can't just change it with the, um, a different type of product and try to make it look good. If we were trying to do any other modification on the aluminum clad window, uh, every single elevation, every single window replacement uh, has to be looked at by the manufacturer and come up with the correct detail so we know what we're getting at the end. Um, that would be the only way that I would I would attempt to accept any of the um, elevations in the pack. But the front elevation, we, we, the only way we can do it is to replace it with a similar type wood window. Uh, they can replace the window without getting into the stucco uh, and still make it weather tight and still make it look good and operational. But but once it touches that stucco and it and try to rematch it, it will not come out right and it's, and it's going to be a um, big mistake. So, uh, and we heard many times from the architect and the, um, the team uh, that. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. It would make it very difficult. I have a problem understanding what is being replaced, what's remaining. If we don't know that now, we're not going to know it out a few later. So, absolutely, okay. go back. We looked at what stays, what goes, what stays, how it's going to replace the one that stays, what being completely replaced needs to have the correct merchandise detail, and how is that being into the new construction. So I think we got to move into Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you. I, I really um, could not agree more with my fellow committee members. I appreciate uh, all of their comments. I appreciate all of their um, observations and insights. I'm not going to repeat them. Um, I think that we would all agree that even if we wanted to approve this, if we agreed with the aluminum plat, which I don't think any of the committee members do, but if we did, I don't think that we could approve what's before us because the plans have too many inconsistencies. So we wouldn't really know exactly what we're approving. So for that reason, I'm curious as to whether my fellow committee members are interested in recommending the continuance or denying it. Um, so I want to have some discussion on that. Um, but getting to the substance of it, I was concerned when my fellow committee member Batnage asked about the muttons and replacing like for like, and we were told that it wouldn't be possible. I think it's not possible to make a finding that this project, um, to make a finding that the, you know, that, that the project would render the property consistent with the legal neighborhood, because um, even though we're not supposed to consider in terms of making our findings, the potential, you know, historic um, nature of the property, it's impossible to deny that the, due to the size of the lots and the properties in the legal neighborhood, um, made up of you know, properties from the very best architects of our you know, local history. Um, 
it's impossible to deny that because the properties are so big, we're dealing with a very small number of homes, whereas the same block in another area of the city would have many homes. There are only a few. So the impact to this home will have an outsized impact, in my view, on the legal neighborhood. So, um, you know, given that nobody can say that any homes in the legal neighborhood have made similar changes, I don't find that we can, I, I don't think I can make the finding that it's consistent with the legal neighborhood. I can't also make the finding that the um, application, the project would be consistent with the home itself. I won't repeat my fellow committee members' uh, comments on that. I agree with all of them. Um, I'm concerned about the objection of Mr. Cannon. We'd like to have some kind of resolution on that. Um, I think um, depending on what my fellow committee members feel about a continuous versus denial, if this were to come back before us, I would find it to be very important to know what are examples of the Lincoln windows in the local area that perhaps we could take a look at. I would like to see some, you know, some, some example of it. Um, and, you know, given that we don't think it's compatible, I don't know if that's, you know, even necessary, but that wasn't before us. Um, so the committee is not familiar with this, this product. Um, there's no comparator to look at, can't make the findings. So for all of those reasons, is this a continuance or is this a denial? Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I do agree with everyone here this evening. The, the most concerning is the inaccuracies in the plans. And I think we've spent a lot of time going over those. And um, I'm, it's been uh, a bit of a waste of time from for our, on our part and staff's uh, that the plan should come accurately presented to us. As you know, we've been an architect for a long time here. So it's, it, that's a bit frustrating. Um, and then to have an architect have difficulty um, interpreting the plans also is a little frustrating. Um, and the next point is, is the, the replacement of the windows matching. And the, the, but the big concern is the stucco work and how you are going to uh, duplicate what has already been there and, 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 and how is that project gonna come out at the end? And are we still gonna have the same beautiful home designed by Babcock 1925 um, on part of that legacy street and which is you know a series of museums entering into the Huntington Library. Uh, they are of a really grand uh, style and, and construction. They were built and constructed by the best, the best materials and the best people. Henry Huntington was still alive at the time. Our showcase houses. These are beautiful and newer. Um, it's a big responsibility and an honor to have one of these houses. And I'm sure that your um, applicants are, are very excited to move in and live in this really beautiful, special home. And uh, I think that uh, you really want to make sure that the, the new homeowners understand um, the changes that are going to be taking place and the potential for loss of, of um, detail. And with that will further possibly decrease uh, potentially the value of the home if it's done incorrectly. People who generally in the real estate market who want to buy these homes are looking for top-notch construction and, and, and products. And originality is something that I feel that most people looking at a historic home are looking for. So I think it would just behoove your client to understand the potential sacrifice. Uh, the back, removing the back, I believe that is something that we were looking at um, as far as the compatibility with the home itself, leaving those arched windows in the back. And I, I don't find the new plan to be compatible. I think those uh, arches were intentionally, I mean, but they were do, done later on. I think they were very um, thoughtfully added to the property. Um, and then when you're, if you did remove that one, you're coming into the actual outside of the home, which is probably, anticipating it could be a thick, foot, foot deep stucco for that back wall, but the original 
the original back wall. That uh, could be a tricky structural situation. So with that in mind, um, is there, do you guys have further discussions? Because this is a kind of a big project for something that's not such a big project. Please. One more yes, comment. go ahead. I, I have also a difficulty um, understanding and knowing exactly what's going to Interior door and window change only. Interior change will be a separate permit. I think this will be more like maybe staff's understanding. We just cannot uh, approve the door and window change only without understanding the interior change is it coming later or is it coming together the the, the 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 real challenge is there is not that we just change the exterior window and, and the door and then all interior change will not affect those i look at the plan a lot of these changes that is being shown on the demolition plan and the new full plan affects these changes, the window and door. So so for us to look at just look at the window and door changes only in the exterior and then the interior to a separate permit, I don't know if that's intent of the applicant to to just to get the DRC look at the exterior only and then the interior will be administratively complete. If it is, but it will still affect the the Exterior changes. So, regardless what the decision is tonight, to be fair to the applicant, they really need to look at how this remodeling will holistically change the exterior and the interior, and how are we going to finish the exterior correctly. Okay, I think it's very dangerous for us to leave the applicant to believe that once you got the exterior done, then everything is fine because the interior cannot be completed without affecting what was approved. And that's gonna be dangerous to all of us. So that, I just wanna make that comment for the record. I also want to really strongly reiterate what um, what both of you said, um, Chair um, Raycon and Chair Red, about the arched windows in the back, like although maybe one or two, we don't know exactly, uh, may not be original there. To me, they are just the unifying architectural theme of this house. And you see it in the front, you see it on the side, you see it in the back, and it's really, really, very, very, um, uh, it's it's like the signature of this house. That's the way I feel about it. And like, this is also echoed on the inside. You see, I just got this from a real estate listing, but you know, you can see that on the inside, the the um, windows are, um, are an architectural feature of the interior as well, these arched windows. And you see that that's echoed in this arch over here, arch over here. So, to remove them really like uh, makes the house very, uh, you know, from something very architecturally uh, custom and very fine to something very architecturally banal, I would say, and very plain and kind of machinery like. So um, I just wanted to uh, agree with both those. Uh. Vice Chair McKay. Thank you. I, I think that. Um, staff had some real issues with addressing this project and it came before us and we're having issues and there's been public comment from an architect that there are issues. Um, so I, I think we've got sort of a universal reaction that this is um, um, it's just not making sense tonight. It's not making sense for so many reasons. And I wanna sort of circle back to where are we going with this tonight? What's our, what's our, what's our, um, 
That's well put. No, I, I would like to, I would like, I think I, I appreciate everybody's comments, but where where are we going? So um my thought of this um question regarding continuance or check. Um I think I'm leaning more towards um deny uh to deny the project tonight. Um, the reason, but I'm open to a um, choice. Uh, but I just have to say that the way I see this project is most suitable for the for the home to observe um, at the house is um, for me the continuance is, is very narrow, um, meaning the, the options. Um, I think really should be. The, the, the windows should be preserved. Um, the the second floor windows in the back, they should all be upgraded. They can be upgraded to match existing windows. Um, for me to uh, approve any uh, add windows, I would have to be convinced with visual uh, reference photos uh, of what's being proposed. Uh, they really need to like for life. So that is uh, that is um if I may just remember that how it may help obviously. I I I think I, I got a sense of getting to the backyard of who is a disaster is is right. the house and safety hazard. So for and, and the homes that they live in yeah. rather than left like this for another four years. I, I just I just felt that we should encourage the old homeowner and the architect to to do the right thing so that we get the right home in the right neighborhood. So I I would support the continuance as, as long as this owner understand with the architects understanding that this is what we want. The ultimate goal is the same, is to is to preserve the great architecture, bring back to the original glory and live there. And be proud of it. So, so there are many solutions that we can make it happen. But by denying it, to go back and they gave up, and, and it's not going to help us. So, I, I I can support a, a continuance as long as the team understands what they're facing, what they're going to be facing. Right. So that's my two cents. Thank you. 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 What would you, what could you envision without, you know, how could this come back better besides just the plans making sense? Like what, I understand that it's not your job to propose that, but I'm, I'm trying to, to understand in terms of considering a denial or a continuance, I'm trying to understand what, how this could come back. Okay. I think uh, the, designer or the architect should understand what is the important feature of the home stay. Um, the second floor, those aluminum windows kind of close. And when that goes, what will be the proper architecture element to go back in and work with the existing home with all these arches, beautiful details, and, uh, and work, look at the market and find out what window type, type of window, what is aluminum or it's wood or a custom made wood to match uh, so that the all these thick shadow line pad still and, and jam details can work with the existing uh, detail and the still produce the latest convenience and comfort. Um, I can see this thing coming back in with the right treatment to be a beautiful home. Uh, back to the original designer's intent uh, to be a very, very nice home. And of course, the interior can be done very nicely. Um, some of these art, these um, air conditioning units can be removed to a different location so that those arch windows will look as beautiful as it was. So yeah, there, there, there's plenty of room to, to play to bring it back. I'm just wondering if, uh, sorry, sorry, Chair, I shouldn't ask you about um, I'm just wondering, I'm 
wondering if there can be some, if, if we were to, and, and I understand that denial is still on the table. We're talking about denial versus continuous. If, does anyone on the committee, has anyone, does anyone on the committee believe that aluminum clad windows can be put on this house? And if so, where? Can I, can I, I don't think it's a matter of whether or not aluminum clad can be placed in the house because I would defend the city's code that they can replace wood with aluminum clad. Mm -hmm. The question is windows that they, you know, are the plans correct? The plans are not correct. Our plans need to be accurately presented to us. I mean, based on that alone, it's we could support a denial. The plans not being correct. Uh, um, are the changes proposed from the special windows change to non-special windows? Is that appropriate? Um, uh, you know, they can they can change the windows over the counter to aluminum clad. Can they replace the stucco and do it like for like? That's the question. Um, and that's something that uh, once that happens and they destroy the stucco and they can't find, they can't replace it again, then that's another issue that the applicant and staff will have to deal with. But I don't believe that's something that we can. We understand none of us want aluminum clad windows to be put into a hundred year old beautiful house like that. And I'm sure um, most people would agree that that is not an ideal situation. Aesthetically and historically, but but they they the owner has the right to do that. It just has to be like for like. Plans need to be consistent, um, and we need to find it to be um, the the changes architecturally compatible with itself uh, and the neighborhood. So, so I think we should try to focus on that. I could go either way. So, uh, I, I understand uh, Committee Member Chang's um, rationale for continuing, possibly, because we don't want to see the house just to sit there anymore. Uh, but at the same time, I see being given these plans with so many inconsistencies is very frustrating. So, uh, I could go either way. It's a uh, denial or a continuous. I have to support it. Um, that's open to that. Um, I've stayed in my, um, my views. Uh, in the meantime, I think um, give the applicant and the owner a chance to come back um, to really uh, consider our comments tonight to see if there's an option uh, to, um, to make sense uh, to to hold on to the historic uh, importance of this house uh, in the meantime to uh, consider. I mean, one more, one more remark. I remember this. I remember when I was in the planning commission when they tried to build this kind of apartment and new home. They tried to squeeze two homes side by side. It raised a lot of noise from the community, from the community not just the community, but the community came and talked about it. I know it's not in front of us. That denial kept up for three or four years again. So I, I, the reason why I try to encourage the current owner to do the right thing so we can have the uh, home restored to its original glory time and have somebody live there and be proud of it. It's one of my motives to, to encourage them to do the right thing. Because this thing exact lot that was there in the planning commission, exact project, uh, trying to build the tennis court next door and the gym got denied. So it's, if you look at the history, that's what it was. I, I agree with the committee. But I'm also on, you know, swapping back and forth because, you know, the proposal that we got this evening was something that didn't show a lot of respect to the character and consistency, architectural consistency and neighborhood compatibility, compatibility with itself. So that alarms me a little bit. 
you know. It's the first application that comes in on the on the brand. And so I think the architect been working here for a while. He understands what San Marino look for. And I'm sure he will bring that to the property owner. And if they cannot come back, then that's the end of this project. But I but I, but, I, but I think they got it. They he understands um, that what we're looking for. Uh, coming back with something is like this is not gonna go. So we're wasting their time and our time too. So I, I think I think I'll 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 go along. If they really want to deny it, I could. <laughs> Even without I go or not, it's gonna get denied. But but I just I just want to see something done correctly in this process. Okay. Thank you. I don't remember any of ever how it was not just unless I was oh, shocked yeah. to look at it. I never had an opportunity. I can't recall one. And and the details and the and the specs. Uh, right. How how many specs drawn out, right? With the, all the details of installation. I also think it's important to note. You do decide to continue that. Part of a, a lot of strong, I mean, besides the stucco, is the wood. And we start mixing aluminum clad with natural wood. It's, um, you're, you're looking for consistency, but yet you're going for inconsistency on such a, a feature of the home. So I think that that would, and, and, the, and, and, and the color, you're going to now pick that bronze, which is going to be the color now. Forever, apparently, right? So as long as those linen clads last, because you can't paint them. So then you now you're forced to paint your shutters that same color, or just have a whole new color limitation, color palette limitation. Very stifling. Some people, <laughs> when it comes to choosing colors on their home. I think I think over years maybe I'll try to move to that. Yes. The the choice of a aluminum clad window. May, may not be the right solution for this remodeling. Probably it's not, but we're not going to tell the architect or the homeowner what to do. They have the right to design what they want. And if it's wrong, we already make it very clear to, to the applicant that it is not a choice. It's not the right choice because, because of the existing detail. Now, if they can come back, because I'm personally not familiar with the Lincoln product, they would have to look at the Lincoln product and see how to plan in with the existing architecture detail and see if it's going to work. If they think it's going to work, show us. If it's not going to work, we'll tell them that it won't work. But, uh, but for us not to see what's in front of us and deny it uh, without even knowing what they're trying to achieve, I think it is, it is just too far from, from being to be well considered. There's enough unknowing this plan to be able to make a, a uh, educated decision. That's my biggest challenge. So I'll, I'll, I'll personally would allow them to come back and then based on what they hear and see if they can find the right solution. And so if you would entertain a motion, I would. Can I add one more comment? I did decide that their plans did not show the play vent detail on the back, um, the, the back structure to the left on the top. There was um, play vent, which was very, very nice. And I'm hoping that that was just an oversight, over and that that would be staying original because it wasn't shown on the, I know you're showing us plans for the windows, but it wasn't on the original or the existing one that's plan. Go ahead. Does someone, someone like to attempt to make a oh, comment so, from? Uh, wait, hold on. We have a comment from from uh, Director Figueroa. Uh, really, really quick. Um, so, I think the uh, well, the word historic was shown out 
and I just want to clarify this poem is not dead by historic, right? But it is a just contribute to the rich history of the city. And I think this um, committee has eloquently done a great job of, of um, identifying how this project, as it is, to your opinion, does not meet certain findings, which is important. Uh, but if the motion is to continue, I would uh, recommend that you continue to a day uncertain. Um, I think the message is clear, and, and I've noticed that the applicants have been alert, taking copious notes. Um, and so I think you've provided an avenue as to what you would consider, um, not to say that you would consider to approve, but you would consider what needs to be done to respect the integrity of the structure. So um, my my recommendation would be if you do continue it, to continue to be uncertain so that the applicants have enough time to address all the comments that you've raised tonight to make sure that uh, they provide special attention to all details, plans are consistent, and the materials are brought in to um, illustrate their point. And perhaps that could uh, make your decision a lot much easier and staff's uh, analysis much more clear. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Director, for your input. I think. Right on. Um, because we have to respect the part that the property owner has the right to input that part. And I think that we have to respect. So, with that said, I'll try to uh, make a motion to continue this application, uh, ER 23 03, uh, to a date uncertain so that the architect um, record have a chance to um, digest our comments tonight as to the accuracy of the plan, uh, all details that are currently existing, the proposed material to be compatible with the existing page, finish detail of the architecture element, and also that all improvement to the Connected so that we understand that they will be not approving a uh, portion of the home, uh, but rather than the entire improvement holistically. So that would be my motion. I second that. Welcome. Yes. Committee member Chang. Yes. Committee member Babbage. Yes. Vice Chair McKay? Yes. Chair Lee Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Item Cameron, Miss Adams, Badage, after you'd be presenting that this evening, Director. Thank you, uh, Director. Um, so back in 2000, uh, June of uh, 2022, uh, last year, City Council approved the San Marino Improvement, um, San Marino Center Improvement Project, which obviously for renovation of the community center plus signage. Uh, on April. 12th of this year, the City Council authorized the renaming of the San Marino Community Center, uh, San Marino Center, to the San Marino Community Center. Uh, during the uh, meeting, there were some illustrations of some of the signage, proposed new signage for the uh, center that was previously approved. Um, and during the meeting, the City Council uh, elected staff to come to before you. Um, to any recommendations for the approved signage. Uh, the signage has been designed to mimic that of the full public library system. Uh, it's to replace one wall mounted sign. So it would just be named, it would be just the uh, uh, the new name of the San Marino Community Center and then a monument sign right in the front consistent with what you see the other monument signs for these two schools uh, that will uh, display the name of the community center. And Public library. Uh, our staff is open for any comments from the. Thank you. 
So if you mentioned there's for approval just for discussion, which we might have on the signage that was uh, part of the uh, staff report. Uh, the signage is essentially mimicking the scroll public library signage. Uh, the aluminum letters uh, that we be painted to be drawn yes, to mimic that. I'm sorry, yes. And it's uh, anti wrong. So, do you have any? Is there anything you can show me from this? Uh, because I want to see that the lettering tonight, I think it was all consistent. Well, but is the lettering consistent with color? I mean, it sounds like the color's not. And I don't know that the font is either. But I might be missing something. Is there any way to take a look at it? The, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> you just can figure out. Are we are we just giving comments? Correct. But this has already been decided. It's already decided. So it is going to go up the way it is. Uh, if the changes if changes are significant, there could be a possibility that they can be changed. But again, we would like to receive comments. We can make the changes. We'll make. Here's the monument sign already. There's nothing else. And they're going to put one like like Valentine one. Right. And it's going to be on both sides. Just the side. It's going to be on both but it will it will be the words will be on on one side on both sides. Just the one. Oh, it's a it's a single side. Single yes. side when you're driving. Correct. Driving. Right. Correct. Right there. Kind of like what used to be there. This is very big. The whole house. It's, 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 not, it's not the same font to scroll, is it? No, I think it's not the same at all. But similar, but it, um, it could be that it's not the same. Yeah. The facade has you know, a little bit of a mid century. I don't know. It's not exactly mid century, but it is mid century. Like maybe something that was a little bit less fanciful, a little bit less uh, uh, is perhaps more um, uh, non less serif or non serif. I don't know. Like the, it's, this is a serif font which has a lot of uh, well, tails. Yeah, it's not a, a, a yes. Oh, the, the, uh, you, if I may, you'd prefer a sans serif font without the detail? Less. Less Just detail. A little less, yeah. Uh, a sans serif would be would be would make it really mid century, whereas a serif font, uh, like I've seen serif fonts that are more um, flowery or more um, elaborate than this one, but. Um, I was thinking of something uh, more on the sans serif side. Kind of a cleaner, cleaner look. Yes. Less, and less, less traditional, maybe. And it's going to be called San Marino. And the San Marino Community Center is a done deal, I believe they voted. Correct. That is the new name. And right. Since it's already been decided, I think the sign is in general just kind of very large for this scale. And then it's right behind the tree. So I think, I think the key here is that there's an address that's visible for people that are attending. I would have loved something much under, more understated, personally, a little subtler. So, and and I understand the monument. I think that's kind of a clear trend in our city, and I think those are nice and they're they're, they're uh, helpful in finding the building. At, at the time when we were working on the, we were the general consensus they want to ship that building. Or include the original design, which is the mid century design. Um, in the beginning, we were going the direction to take the two buildings together, meaning sharing the details, sharing the height, sharing the finishes, and the uh, storefront. Um, that 
didn't go very well. It went back to the original essential design. So in the signage, it's really for a for a little different purpose, but but it but it is the font type can work with the mid-century era type design. It may work a little bit better when I design the building so that the the uh, public library signage kind of work with the different time of the building yeah, in the 80s and 90s versus outbuildings in the 50s. So I'm sure the, the sign designer can find something in that era of time they may work a little bit better with. You know the, the sign for Lacey, the mm -hmm. chair, the sign at Lacey Park. Park. The sign yeah, from Lacey Park. Park. Lacey Park. Lacey Park. Lacey Park. And that is a real um, big century look that I think is more of what I was doing, more of what I was suggesting. But I forgot exactly what was that Lacey Park sign probably went in in the early 40s. And then also, this it's was very nice that it, um, it, uh, it, 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 this, this, the Lacey Park sign, it, it's, it's on, there's, there, it has a, 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 a oh, stone, it's on a stone, but it, it projects very far away from it. It's a very deep, so that when you see it from a certain size, it, you, it has depth. It's kind of 3D, yeah. yeah. So so I, that's an aspect that's nice too. I think about that, um, and, and sort of as a mid-century characteristic as well. I don't that's know what that is called. Yeah, I'm sure there's a name, a proper name for what I'm talking about, but I, I think um, it's a little bit more on the than how it's yes, thank you. It's very sans serif. Yeah. So yeah, this is more Palantino. So this, yeah. this is the uh, sign uh, at least. Yes, on the Virginia side, in the planters, when you enter Virginia, there's a planter with some kinds of planters. Then you see it right. Okay. Yeah, it, and it, the letters that, project out of the, and from the wall, so it, there's a depth to it. And that font used to be the same lettering, I believe, at the old high school, and the high school before it was remodeled, when it was built. Originally, there's old signs from Carver, I believe, and there's old signs, San Diego High School signs that show. That same lettering that we see at the high school, that we see at the park. Right. And I think a couple of the monuments, as you said, have a little bit of that mid-century uh maybe that sort of ties. It's an in. idea. We also will forward this information to the public works department and see if we can uh, work with the sign designers to see what changes we can make. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a thank you. Thanks for bringing it. Do you guys have a, a completion date or an uh, estimated? Estimated is because the range that has kind of slipped, but I believe it's towards the end of the year. Looking at okay. approval of all of the minutes. Do we approve them all at once or not? Or do we go through them one by one? So we have a conference. Yeah, so just highlight some of the things that we've just done. Kind of we've gone back and checked all of those minutes according to our opening in 22. Because I know I did not have time to do that. Um, and if if we haven't, then I'm going to suggest that we continue this site. Because this isn't just, just I mean, I felt very responsible for checking uh, the accuracy of 11 minutes for one meeting, but this is five or six. If we continue it, we can uh, take a moment to think. Would you like to make a comment if you're, if you're meaningful? Gabriel. Uh, I believe the committee has the option to continue the minutes. Um, well, as far as the ones from 2020, if you find that the most recent minutes from the last TRC meeting on March, um, I'm sorry, not March, April 17th, 
I want to say uh, was accurate. You could uh, choose to approve that one and then continue the others um, if you find that they are accurate. Uh, I recollect my recollection. Sure, sure. So the, the sooner we, we approve this minute, uh, not to go back three or four months, make it easier. So whatever we can approve, we should approve them. But I think they're not concerns. We've been approving the minutes as we go since minutes have been kept, but I don't know if you took a look at the agenda. These are minutes from 2022, and they're so they're been created now. They've been they've been created ex post facto. So in fairness, they need to be they need to be compared to the actual meetings because the notes from the meetings, because as I've been informed from staff, they're actually being uploaded as the official record online so that if the public goes to see what happened at a specific meeting that we've all taken all the time and staff has taken so much time to prepare for and and you know render the decisions that we've made that it reflected accurately you know so i just i don't think that the public's necessarily going to review the the audio of every single minute but you could see something an agenda item in, in the past that there have been some changes so that was just my thought i guess I agree to approve the one that we while the regulation question can easily get those done. For the, those are the special time that I think we had a period where we where we have a, a constant change of staff and all those bad all in that period. So I think that falls in that period or not. Because we did have some lapse on the minute. Uh, right. They were being taken. They weren't being prepared yet. They weren't just weren't being done. So we caught up. Caught up. They just need to be approved, but we do need to go over them. And I think what I'm hearing is Vice Chairman Kay would like to do it so that she can be thorough on it. In all respect, Vice Chairman Kay, she is very thorough with our minutes, and I do appreciate that thoroughness. So I think that it's important that we that we take that into consideration so that they are accurate. You have to make my thank you, Chair. Appreciate that. I'd like to move to continue the um, um, agenda number four for two meetings. I'd like to 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 move to continue the um, approval of the January 5, 2022, March 2, 2022, April 6, 2022, May 5, 2022, May 18, 2022 minutes to um, the first meeting of June. Um, if, if we could, we could certainly move to approve the minutes from the last meeting, but the 2022 meetings, I'd like to move to the first uh, meeting of June. Do we have a second? I'll second that. And if you'd like a, a motion to approve uh, the minutes of the April 19, 2022. Um, since you second the motion, you can take local on that. And we'll Roll call. Member Chow? Yes. Committee Member Cheng? Yes. Committee Member Batnage? Yes. Com Vice Chair McKay? Yes. Chair Raycon? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. And um, I'll let you I proceed. Somebody want to make a motion on the April 19th? Yes. I'll move to approve the minutes of April 19th, 2022. We have a second? I'll second the motion. Roll call. Yes. Committee member Cheng? Yes. Committee member Bandage? Yes. Vice Chair McKay? Yes. Chair Lee Kong? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Director's report. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Just to remind the committee uh, that the next meeting will be held at Council Chambers. This is the meeting of uh, May 17th. Uh, let staff know if you can make that meeting. Uh, we already have one committee member who might be attending, Vice Chair McKay. And um, 
and uh, alternate member person has a race and submission. So we will have all five support. Um, I'd also like to remind the committee that on the uh, city council uh, May 10th meetings, uh, the community council will select the uh, members that will be filling the uh, vacancies for GRC. I think all of you will be pleased with the announcements and that will be coming in. Uh, also next Wednesday, we, you know, since we spoke a lot about windows today, uh, Staff will be taking a discussion item that uh, City Council Director Staff to bring forward, which is the discussion on the windows because since it's easier than to approve on the list. Um, so um, I envision that this will turn out similar to the routine material update, where uh, Council will direct staff to make sure to involve both DRC and Planning Commission and any potential amendments to the, to the approved list. So that discussion will take place next Wednesday and then obviously I will bring back to uh, a summary of uh, the direction given by uh, City Council. Um, and then finally, uh, oh, actually that was it. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Since we have no further business to discuss, I'd like to adjourn the meeting. Uh, I'll join today's regular meeting to Wednesday, May 17th at 6 p.m. in the City Hall Council Chambers. Is 8 11. Yeah. Is that only for that one meeting or for?